Um, hey dad. Hmm? Um, could could I go to the grocery store today? I, I have to like pick up some pasta for dinner. Uh, I, I, I don't know, Rosie. Um, I, I kind of also wanted to pick up a birthday cake. Be back before I get home. All right? All right. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Joanne Boyce. Yes, that Joanne Boyce. Listen, I need you to take down this description. Hey. Hey. How was the supermarket? Did something happen? Hint your spaghetti, it'll get cold. Rosie, did something happen? Okay, this lady, she she like followed me out of the store, and then, and then she she like was like running after me and yelling at me. So yeah, and I, and she kept calling me Bo. And I think she was she was calling the police when I was riding away. She called you Bo. Yeah, like over and over again. So weird. Where are you going? <laughs> what the hell, Dad? <laughs> Rosie, I can't explain it right now. I just need you to start packing. I need you to. No, no. Um. Hello, ma'am. I'm Detective Bellamy, and this is Detective River. Hi. Uh, hi. Is your name Bo Boyce? No. No, I am Rosie Rosie Lewis. Okay, listen. I think you have the wrong house. I, <laughs> I don't know. Okay, would you mind stepping out for a second for a few questions? Um. Yeah. Sure. Follow me, please. Okay. Is there anyone else in the house that we should be aware of? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm just my dad, like... What's your father's name? I'm Jason Lewis. All right, would you mind taking a seat in the back of the car? No. Um, sure. Uh, can I talk to my dad first? I, I don't know. No, I'm afraid, I'm afraid not. Dispatch, this is Bellamy, subject confirmed, Jason Lewis, send back up, over. Name? I'm Rosie Lewis. All right, Rosie, uh, do you understand why we took you in today? Jason Lewis, the man you believe to be your father is suspected of kidnapping you 16 years ago. Now I know this is a lot to process, but what you need to know is your real mother's name is Joanne Boyce, the woman you met at the shopping center today. And she's waiting to talk to you outside. We'll have uh, more questions. Uh,
home. There we go. Uh, one in, sweetheart. So we were about to sit down for dinner and we got the call. Um, do you like spaghetti? Okay, great. I'll just heat this up. We've missed you so much. I'm so glad you're safe. James made dinner. Oh, and I need to get started. I'm so glad you're home. You have no idea how much your father and I have been looking for you. Good night, Bo. Love you. Um, could... could you call me Rosie? Who is Rosie Lewis? That's you. What are you saying? Jason? Who is she? Rosie, please, not Don't now. lie to me, Jason! The police told me everything they know, but they told me enough. My daughter! I took her down. I took her down to Bird's Creek. We were gonna go swimming. I just, I had to put on some sunscreen. She was gonna go in, so she wanted to go, she just wanted to go in, so, so I let her in. The water was shallow, but it was moving so fast. One second, she was there, and the next... I lost everything that day, Rosie! Claire, my wife, she blamed me!
And she left me. And I had nothing. Then I found you. Why me? You look just like her. You know, I, I've always treated you right. I wasn't sure at first, but but, but Take you, me to her. No. Rosie, please, we need get to get the hell out. I'll be the first to wish you a happy birthday. The surge in hate crimes against Asian Americans only getting worse. A wave of violence against elderly Asian Americans putting communities across the country on edge. Deadly shootings in Atlanta killing at least eight people may have targeted the Asian community. Victims were targeted because of their race. Most of the victims were Asian women. And at least half of the victims are believed to be Asian women. Asian hate crimes are more frequent than they've ever been in the past decade. The last time we saw numbers like these was back in 2001 following the 9-11 attacks when anti-foreigner sentiment swept the nation. As overall hate crimes dropped by 7%, anti-Asian hate crimes are up 150%. Because of this, many Asian-owned businesses are being forced to shut down due to the sheer amount of anti-Asian incidents they are being forced to endure. Asian Americans are facing a mental health crisis as a result of the discrimination and violence displayed in the past year. 
While Asian hate crimes have been more prevalent than we've seen them in the past, they didn't start as of recently. There are records dating back over 150 years ago detailing massacres and riots in the US all aimed at Asian Americans. The US has a long and dark history relating to the suppression and discrimination of Asian Americans as seen in the Japanese internment camps and the Chinese massacre of 1871. And while we don't see massacres and riots these days, things are still getting worse and worse. As we've seen in the past year, the pandemic has only served to increase the level of hatred towards Asians and Asian Americans. Due to the viruses start in Wuhan, China, many wrongfully believed the Chinese to be at fault for the outbreak, and slowly people shifted the blame from those in Wuhan who initially contracted the virus to the entire Chinese community. As a result of this, many started referring to COVID-19 by offensive racist names like Kung Flu and the Chinese virus. Many politicians started doing the same, and soon a large part of the US population believed Asians as a whole to be responsible for the economic crisis that came as a result of the pandemic. And while racism is a disease in this country that will take years and possibly decades of reform on both the systemic and societal level, there are many things we can do to reverse its effects. Simply learning about the history of Asian discrimination and educating others on the topic can go a long way in preventing it from happening in the future. By reaching out to your local elected officials, you can help pass anti-discriminatory legislation. Even though we are moving in the right direction, there is still a lot of work to be done before we can consider our society free of hatred and discrimination. If we all do our part, I'm certain we can make a change. I'm originally from Saratov, Russia. I came in July of 1999 um, to study at the University of Notre Dame. Uh, I moved from Kazakhstan. It is a multicultural uh, country. Mountain View, California. I'm from Kazakhstan. It's in Central Asia. I moved here a year ago. There is multiple places where you can buy Russian food. There's one place I like to shop at where they have Russian delicacies and Russian dishes and Russian meats and pirashki. After uh, after moved in, uh, in, in the US, uh, I started to cook my cultural traditional dishes like filmeni, like plov. I support uh, my culture uh, through cooking. Yeah, that just keeps you connected to those kinds of foods that you used to eat and enjoy when you were little. The San Diego community has maintained Russian culture by like coming together and like hosting parties and stuff. I think the Russian culture of togetherness and socialization that's been fostered because in Russian culture it's very popular to make connections, make new friends and people are amicable and friendly. I moved from um, Siberia to America uh, 13 years ago his two daughters by myself. My magazine, Grajanka, is very cultural media project. Grajanka means city girl. City girl, Grajanka, means like Russian girl <laughs> for me. Uh, I can tell you for sure that this magazine is helping Russian community, uh, Russian people, especially women, to be informed about uh, new life in America. This magazine is keeping our culture because usually it's a lot of information about uh, music, about culture, about concerts in America, in Russia. And people are saying, thank you so much, Yana, for your magazine, because your magazine is keeping us together. 
I, I had a good experience to be a teacher in Russia, but when I moved to America, I started to work with my magazine and I didn't have any time, any chance for piano lessons. But I always missed my <laughs> piano and I always wanted to come back to that. And when I moved to San Diego, I, I started to teach kids to play in piano. The Russian culture is very old, pretty uh, beautiful and old, and I'm very proud of my culture. I think changing only like new media, new uh, type of connection, especially with all this uh, COVID internet and all this stuff like that. Um, but still, we are very close to each other. Still, we like our holidays. I like Russian style, Russian style uh, food, Russian style, <laughs> uh, Russian style clothes and all stuff like that. My name is Ike Gazarian. <laughs> Originally, I'm from Russia and my restaurant is Pushkin Russian restaurant in San Diego. Um, got into it by mistake. <laughs> I wasn't planning on it. A buddy of mine wanted to open a, uh, a restaurant and we decided to do it together and then last minute he decided to bail and so I ended up with a Russian restaurant. So Alexander Pushkin is one of Russia's most popular poets and the reason why they love him is because he was writing little stories for kids as well as poems and, and, and books for adults as well. So you people learn to love Pushkin from a very young age uh, going up. So it's not, it's not as difficult to read as Dostoevsky or Chekhov or Tolstoy. And he actually changed the entire way of the, the Russian literature. He was born in 1799 and he died at the age of 37. But during that short life that he lived, he had made a, a huge impact. He even changed the way people write in Russia. After him, Tolstoy, Chekhov, Dostoevsky were all basically his pupils. So he had changed the way Russian literature is and everybody else followed him. I think every food shapes every culture and um, with Russians, it brings people together. There are certain dishes that are so traditional to people. Like we have a lot of uh, Russians who moved here two, three generations ago and they remember how their grandmother would make pierogies and whatnot. And so when they come to this restaurant, they get to try the food that they can no longer cook or get in their own families, but it brings them memories. So I would say the food has a lot to do with uh, memories, a person's memories from before. Um, so Russians have a lot of interesting ingredients, but um, it's a lot less than I would say, a lot less interesting in some ways than um, other foods, like maybe Thai food. You have less spices, less herbs, because Russians were all about preserving food for the winter. So a lot of the a lot of Russian foods are pickled. There are a lot of things that are smoked. Basically, it's done so that during winter time they can survive without growing crops. You have even things like the, the pierogies or pilmenis that you freeze, and then you know you only cook them when you need it. So um, you know Russian culture is the way it is because of the long winters when it comes to foods and preserving foods. And I um, recommend people to try as much as possible, as much as the budget allows, and try different things to learn things about their culture. Do you ever just cry for no reason? I feel like there's always some underlying reason. I don't know. Last week, mom showed me this drawing I did of the family, and I just started bawling. I couldn't stop. <laughs> All right, this is me. Wait, what? I think I forgot my wallet back there. Okay, focus please. Oh, I feel like I'm playing 21 questions. I like it when you tell me things. Fine. Okay, biggest fear. It can't be something stupid like snakes. First of all, it's not stupid, it's instinctive. And second oh of God. all, okay. Uh, 
I guess my biggest fear is that this is the millisecond after I've died. That everything I've experienced isn't real. And one day I'm just going to open my eyes and just see black. Does that make sense? Mm. This is me. Wait. I've really got to go. No, I think I left my phone back there. You're joking. <laughs> What's so special about this place? What? We keep circling back here to the car. What do you mean? I don't know. Maybe it was just a good moment. I don't know. It was also the last time you ever saw me. I guess so. <laughs> this isn't even how it happened. You're rewriting everything. No, I'm not. No, tell me. Well, first of all, I wouldn't have worn this. I've literally seen you wear that exact same thing. I only wore it the day you got it from. No, no, no we sorry. talked about it's it pretty, and you said you pretty. liked it. I like it. It's just not me. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. <laughs> what? I just missed your laugh. <laughs> Can I ask you a question? Okay. You didn't come here out of guilt, did you? Tell me you know this isn't your fault. Yeah, I know. Do you? Mm -hmm. Really? What are you doing? I'm just asking you a question. No, Maeve, where are you going? I didn't come to, I didn't come to be lectured to. Then why did you come? Remember that summer in Malibu? My mom was really into ABBA? Yeah. <laughs> I come here whenever I have trouble sleeping. What about now? You're relentless. Well, maybe you could just fix that next time. The bracelet, too. Can you just leave me alone? Can you just leave me alone? No. Do you remember the time that I dared you to see who could swim out further? I don't know why I did it. I, I think I was just trying to prove a point. But all of a sudden this wave came crashing into both of us and I couldn't find you. You were just gone. But that was forever ago. It doesn't matter anymore. I'm sorry. You don't have to be yes. sorry. Yes, I do. I was one of the last people to ever see you, and I ruined it. You didn't ruin it. I shouldn't have let you get into that car. Maeve, it was over a year ago. If I could have just kept you for just a second longer. Well, maybe you can't you... do anything about that anymore. The best thing you can do is try to move past this. Move on with your life. I know that. Then you know that nothing in whatever this is is going to fix anything. The car still crashed. You know, I've rewritten this so many times. I don't even know what we talked about. I miss you. And I can't do this. You can. Try. but I'm not making any promises. I know. This is 
as me. They're gonna be fine. The Sabled Sports Eastern Sierra is an organization that welcomes anybody with any disability to come enjoy the outdoors. It means a lot to me. Really, our job is to, to support other people trying to really get out and ski and ride and mountain bike, road bike, paddle, rock climb, whatever it is. My name is Nigel, and I've been skiing with DS for five years. His first time skiing was with DSES. Nigel has had a great progression from his first year just going on a sit ski to learning how to, to balance on skis. Now he's hit a point where he can actually load a chair by himself and he can ski off of a chair by himself. They just grow so much. It's really awesome. One of the most rewarding parts of this is definitely seeing the kids get excited and want to come back and saying like skiing is their favorite thing. It's what they do when they're in trouble or like after school, they want to go skiing. I have a disabled son who uh, suffered a brain injury after college. We, uh, we called Disabled Sports and we decided to try a ski lesson. We came out into the snow and they put the skis in front of Grayson and he just stepped in them like he had been in them yesterday. They tethered Grayson with a, a big burly fireman behind him, started coming down uh, the run that we now know as apple pie and he was just in great shape. My wife walked out and uh, saw Grayson coming down the slopes. It was quite a moment. Because a year prior, Grayson was a thrashing mess and here he was skiing. To say that DSCS made an impression would be the understatement of the century. So, if you have a different ability, I highly recommend coming out and seeing what we have to offer. We don't believe anything is impossible. DSES is here at Mammoth Mountain to make this place accessible and fun for everybody. I think it's a place where miracles happen. I love skiing a lot. Everything about it. Thank you, DSDS.
improv. I've never competed in one of these competitions before. There's a surprising amount of pressure in the improv world. Not to mention, if I don't do well, I think Veronica would never talk to me again. <laughs> it's kind of exciting that you guys are here, though. I never thought I'd be in a documentary. Oh, there she is. So ladies, where are we headed? Uh, the Gracie Crease Theater for the competition. What happens when we get there? Okay, well, we're gonna compete. And win! Duh. I'm rooting for you guys. Thanks, Thank you. Greg. What? I, what? What's happening? Look! I don't understand. That is Doobie Christensen's car. Ew, and she's with Wendy. How forgettable. I, okay. Oh, Rachel, for five seconds, can you just not be so ignorant? This means that Doobie Christensen is going to be in the competition today. I'm sorry, I still don't understand. Who is Doobie Christensen? Uh, only my worst enemy. The worst person on earth. A snake. A reincarnation of Prince Philip. The embodiment of being late to an audition. And how do you know she's competing? Because her car is right there. She would never be out before 12.30 otherwise. She's basically a hermit who leaves her house. <laughs> No, I will not let her get the best of me. Rachel, get out of the way! What? Eat it, Doobie! Veronica, are you okay? You gonna be okay for the competition? Yeah. Look at their smug faces. Oh Rachel, I can hear you! Welcome everybody to the Greasy Crease Improv Competition! Competing tonight, we have the Veronicas and the Doobies! Today we'll be playing slideshows. The Doobies will act out a scene that the Veronicas will narrate. Our topic is first day of school. Teams, are you ready? Ready. 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 Start. Here's me on my first day of school. I'm so excited to see my best friend so that I could stab her in the back. Next slide. Here's me writing out my plan for how I'm going to ruin my best friend's freshman year. I'm thinking of leaving her behind and joining a new improv group, even though we promised to be improv sisters forever. Next slide. Are you anything but bitter, Veronica? You're one to talk. You're the one who replaced me with Wendy just to make me jealous. This may be hard for you to take in, Veronica, but not everything is about you! I'm not nearly as self-obsessed as you make me out to be. You're the one who started the rumor that I could improv because I knew I wasn't good enough. That was years ago. Dude, you are the most insufferable- Stop it! Whatever drama you guys had was years ago, and you're still fighting about it. You two are so selfish that you don't realize that you're making everyone around you uncomfortable. I mean, look around. I signed up for this competition because I wanted to try something new. I thought it would be fun, but I've been tiptoeing around Veronica all day. 
Everything is personal with you guys. Don't you get tired? How can you say that this is fun? How can you say that improv is your life and you just ruined a competition because of your petty problems? I don't want to be a part of this. Rachel, stop being dramatic. Where are you going? Drama sucks. Shut up, Wendy. Look, Rachel, if an apology is what you're looking for, then fine, I'm sorry. Where are you even going? I'm driving you home. I can walk. Why are you still upset? I said I'm sorry. Because I know you don't mean it. I know that improv acting is your life or whatever, but for one second, could you be genuine? I am perfectly genuine. <sighs> for someone so self-absorbed, you are not very self-aware. You think I don't know that I'm annoying and difficult to be around? I'm aware. You're not the first improv partner to tell me that. Who was? <sighs> Doobie. That's the real reason why she left and joined another improv group. She said I was too difficult to work with. I see how someone can maybe think that, but it's just who I am. It's not true. You don't have to be difficult, Veronica. If you wanted to change, then you could. I know. It's just sometimes I wonder who I would be if I wasn't the crazy improv girl. You'd be Veronica. Wouldn't that be better? I guess. Look, Rachel, I'm sorry. Really, I'll try to be better from now on, okay? Okay. Wanna steal the trophy? What? Thank you, thank you. You could do like a bow. I didn't ask you to do this so you could just be on your phone the entire time. Yeah, one sec. Dow's down again. Can you take the bag at least? It's kind of heavy. I thought you wanted things to continue. And I do. I decided to come, right? Then could you try a little harder? God damn it. What? Lost reception. Did you hear what I said? Becca, look, you have my attention. What do you want to talk about? Yeah? Okay, I'll be right back.
well.
Why did it have to be me? I didn't know where I was. The bright lights, sirens, and unfamiliar faces all seemed so strange. It all happened so fast. One day, playing with toys. The next, hospitalized with pneumonia and an adenovirus. When life changes in an instant, you panic. It's a moment of realizing how fragile life really is and how much you need the support of others. Since that day, I have been depending on my doctors to keep me alive by tracking my medical history. My name is Aparna Rao. I am a physician at Rady Children's Hospital and I'm a pediatric pulmonologist. For a long time, I didn't really understand what this disease was. It's such a complicated and delicate thing to try to explain to a two-year-old. All I knew is when I ran, I couldn't breathe afterward. Most um, infectious bronchial, uh, bronchiolitis obstetrans is a very rare disease. In, in uh, short, it comes under the umbrella of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, and this is most common in children after an uh, infection. The simplest way I can explain the lung architecture is like it's like an upside down tree. There's a big, huge tree trunk and then divides into right and left part of the bronchial tree. And then it keeps dividing till, until we have really tiny bronchioles and respiratory bronchioles that participate in gas exchange. It's common for people to chase after things they know they can't have, and I was no different. All I wanted to do was play sports, yet I sat behind fences my whole childhood watching others live out my dreams. The one sport I played, baseball, became too tough on me as I grew older. I couldn't even run to second base without my lungs feeling on the brink of collapse. It all felt so unfair. The most uh, challenging times of our breathing is when we are exercising or when we are sleeping. So in, in most of us, we can compensate very well you are able to take a little bit of exercise and not feel very tired. They may be able to exercise, but not as much as other people with completely normal lung architecture and lung function. However, they, it's still important for us to challenge. So a lot of time, children with bronchiolitis of deterrence may not be able to exercise as much as other population, but in spite of that, they should continue to do because you don't want to add deconditioning to it. I would go back to Radies throughout my childhood to test my lungs. Every time I walked through those hallways, I felt like a failure. The other friends I had were all normal human beings, and yet I was stuck with Peebo. I wanted to change. I wanted to be like them. I explained to people what my condition actually was, but they never understood. If you think of the lungs, a lot of diseases can mimic that. So one being asthma itself, where you cough, you wheeze, you have exercise limitation. If, ha if you have any other underlying disease, um, you know, that can cause bronchiectasis, like cystic fibrosis. I regret ever wanting to conform to society. I was a naive kid, pitying myself for something I had no control of. Nobody is normal, and what makes us, us, is our differences. There was a chance I wouldn't make it out alive, and that my story would never have been told. Yet with this opportunity I have been given, I feel encouraged to look at the world optimistically each and every day. And over time, um, initially your lung functions were low, but now you have stabilized your lung functions, and you're doing really good, actually. You know, remember, we do your pulmonary function test. We also assess your lung architecture by doing CT scans and then we assess you clinically. So there are three ways of assessment and all those three ways you're doing really, really well. You have taken care of yourself and that is what reflects when you come for your clinic visits. I always questioned why it had to be me as a kid. Yet with the experiences I have endured since that initial diagnosis, I know that without this adversity, I wouldn't be the same person I am today. I take the utmost pride in my circumstances and I know that it all happened for a reason. While it will continue to pose challenges to me throughout my life, I am so thankful that I had to be the one with post-infectious bronchiolitis obliterance.
whole Hershey, age 17. A delinquent, an addict, and now I know what Smarties do. You can still redeem yourself, son. Help us catch this gold thief and we can wipe your record clean. All you gotta do is tell us what happened. Well, <laughs> before we begin, could I get a pop? It all started last Wednesday. I admit I was in over my head. I was blind. The world is filled with good people, but here in Taffy Town, it's easy to get into a sticky situation. Dottie Jean, what are you doing here? Where's Reese? Oh, he's studying. Hmm, so what can I do for you? Talk to me, Dottie. Oh, Mr. Hershey, I can't do this anymore. Do what? He won't let me do anything. Won't let me go anywhere. And he always brings these other girls over. It's horrible. All right, don't get so worked up, Dottie. Here, have a pop, why don't you? You know I don't do that, Mr. Hershey, but I appreciate it. Suit yourself. So what are you gonna do about it, huh? Have him suspended? Expelled even? No, no, nothing so morbid. Mr. Hershey, tomorrow he and that other girl are going to be taking the SAT together. Hmm. So you want him framed? What do you mean? Well, you know I deal in smarties, and he's taking that test after all. Oh yeah, I can see it play out all right now. Yeah, you've really thought this through, haven't you? And I'm going to be your fall guy, right? I don't know what you're saying. Who do you think I am anyway? Some guy you can come to when your boyfriend's been causing trouble? Yeah, what? You got one that's cheating? One you need to get rid of? Hmm. Yeah, just give me a smile. I'll fix it right up for you. I must look like such a dope to you right now. I think you're wicked. And I think you're desperate. I can pay you. I'll do anything. How much are you talking? A lot, Mr. Hershey. A lot. Hmm. Half up front and half later. I can't. I can't do that now. But I will pay you back, I promise. This Reese fellow scented like a bad apple, so I figured I might as well offer my services. The plan was simple. She'd talk to Reese, tell her that I could help him. She would have him meet with me at this park and I could sell him the Smarties. Then, when he went to his SAT the next day, we would report him for possession of illegal intelligence enhancers. You Mr. Hershey? Yeah. Dottie sent me. She said she could help me pass my SAT. I can. What are these? Smarties. You'll need them to pass your test. I can do fine on my own, thank you very much. Plans change, of course. Dot's had me plant the Smarties in his car in the middle of the night. But there were some... complications. Everything went according to plan the day after, but I wasn't so sure about it now. Am 
and what's more, Dots was lying to me. Well, you know, I had a feeling there was something Dots wasn't telling me. She said that Reese was cheating on her, and that he was going to take the SAT with some mystery girl. I didn't see anything. And so after trying to sell to him, I had the question if Reese was the horrible person that Dots made him out to be. In Taffy Town, it's easy to get into a sticky situation. I wasn't about to let that happen to me. That evening, Dots came over to discuss how much I'll get paid. There was a surprise in store for me. Dots? Yeah. Come by my place later tonight. We need to discuss our little arrangement. Alright. Got a problem with that? Maybe. Suppose you tell me what's going on. That's right. Suppose you tell me what you've been hiding. I've been clear as crystal. What are you accusing me of? Reese was a good man. He wasn't a cheat. So why'd you want him out of the picture? Tell me now. wanted Reese's gold. Of course, Mr. Hershey. How much should he have? A little over 200 grand worth. One half. Go ahead, Mr. Hershey. Yeah, police. I have a lady here with a stolen bag of gold. Uh huh. Yeah, why don't you swing by later tonight? Thanks. Oh, Dots. You thought you could deceive me? Garner a little sympathy for your plight? Well, I saw through it all. And you're gonna be behind bars tonight. But they won't be gold ones. What'd you do? What did I do? Nothing at all, Mr. Hershey. You think you're so sweet, but you've really soured up. Don't lie to me, Dots. Well, I may have called the police. Told them about your little dealing antics. Now why would you do that? Gold, Mr. Hershey. Gold. Why wouldn't I want it all? Your hands are just as dirty. They'll find you eventually. You stole that gold. No, I don't do that, Mr. Hershey. That woman ruined it all in one fell swoop. Manipulated me, swindled me, buried me alive. 
I should have known this would happen. We're in Taffy Town, where everyone's a little sour on the inside. And yet it was her sweet seed that poisoned my life. Man! Brad, I think I want to move. You what? It's just like there's no reason to live here. Okay, we're finishing our Starbucks and then discussing it. Okay, so why are you wanting to move exactly? You are going to hate me for saying this. You've been my best friend forever. What? What's up? I think I'm finally ready to leave the valley. You what? Just think about it. We lived our whole lives here. Isn't it time to just go experience something new? Go experience the west side or something? I'm stopping you right there. You are not leaving the valley. Let's go for a drive. I'll just show you why. You would want to leave where we went to school together? We'd want to leave the mall we went to growing up behind? You would want to leave the neighborhood we grew up in? You would want to leave the minorly sketchy airport that we've both always wanted to learn how to fly at? And lastly, you would want to leave me? This is our home. You lived here your whole life. Isn't there something about this place that would make you want to stay? It's just a suburban, hot, bland valley. Okay, but this isn't just the valley. This is the 818, the SFV. People dream about this place. Really? They do? Probably. I, I don't know. But the point is, you shouldn't just pick up everything and leave. Let's just go back to my house and think this through a little more. Ugh, the traffic here is so awful. I mean, Chad, it's better than the west side, surprisingly, if that's even an achievement. Oh yeah, I didn't really think about that. But what about your job at the Van Nuys Starbucks? It has just lost its excitement for me. You should just work at the Sherman Oaks Starbucks. You know, that actually could work. Modern problems require modern solutions. But then, still, I live in Panorama City and my car gets broken into all the time, oh my god. Then just be my roommate, you can just move in with me in Encino. You know, surprisingly, there's something I would miss about driving through the middle of the valley in the middle of the summer when it's 118 degrees out. What am I doing? I'm he making, oh my god, I'm making a huge mistake. I mean... Not to say I told you so, but I kinda did. <laughs> Ugh, the west side is just so overrated, honestly. Exactly! We live in the valley where it's more affordable to live and we can still drive over the hill to the beach in Malibu. 
Valley's really just the best of both worlds. We can take the 405 to the west side, the 101 to Hollywood, the 134 to Burbank, and everything else is only like 15 minutes away. See, exactly, that's why the valley's so great. Yeah, I love it here. And plus, we have Valley Girls. Valley Girls, she's a Valley Girl! And we have Starbucks, and it's Zeno. Okay, Brad, I think I'm gonna stay. You got to me. That's the power of the of the murder of George Floyd, many people were looking, how do we support black? How do we buy black? And if you Google black owned businesses in North County, you'll find about three. They're all restaurants. In San Diego, we only have 0.8% of the black population that lives here. And so we wanted to look into what could we do to make Encinitas a more inviting place and a more accessible place for black communities that want to come and make a home here. Black Collective has offered the space to black vendors, artists, creatives throughout the community to be able to showcase their product. We have about 25 vendors now in the shop. My name is Danielle Black Lyons. I am an artist. My collective is Salty Soul Artworks and my work is really based off of my love for the ocean and for surfing. My name is Rod James. The business that I do is a brand called Elenex. The items that we make are the skateboards, socks, apparel, and headwear. One of the challenges I've seen is just not everybody wants black surfer artwork. So I've had to kind of whitewash some of my, my paintings down. Looking inward and like, why would I do that? I make it for myself. I make it for other women of color who want to see themselves in predominantly white spaces like surfing. If you don't like it, then I didn't make it for you. <laughs> the Black Lives Matter movement started because of a lot of social injustice. Just time to let voices be heard from people of color. If you see, like in a black community, what we're going through, you know, George Floyd, modern day times right now died while everybody was just sitting there just watching. This is um, not the first time, it's just the first time that it really got caught on video. It's just challenging in general to be a person of color in this country and then to have your business be taken seriously by other people I think is another challenge that I faced when you're a black indigenous person of color. It's much harder to get um, those loans and to get those spaces to actually sell your wares in. It's so important to support those businesses. So I think a lot of people um, assume that if we're saying Black Lives Matter, that other lives do not matter, and that's not the case at all. Black Lives Matter does not mean that we are trying to be a dominant race. It does not mean that we are trying to cause division. We're fighting for black people to be able to walk down the street without being harassed, to be able to drive their cars without fear of getting pulled over and shot. That's what Black Lives Matter is about. For those that think, you know, saying Black Lives Matter means that my life as a Latino woman doesn't matter isn't the case. It just means that we have to really put the focus on lifting our most oppressed communities so that all lives can truly matter.
It's such a beautiful day. You're the best boyfriend ever. It's so nice here. Whoa, get past this box. Blue, what is happening? Blue, I won't let us happen. She's mine now, sucker. I must find her. You will be subject to my torture for all of eternity. Ha ha ha. Loser Black, get past the shoe. Easy. Fine. Try this lame hat. Give me a hard challenge. I'm coming for you, Blue. What? How? How? I have an idea. Jump on the pillow. Cheese is asleep. Just be quiet, okay? Alright. Promise. Almost there. Stay patient. And jump! What? Did you say How did she escape? Oh my goodness. You. No! Yeah. <laughs> 
Oh, yeah. 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 Oh,